Trinity. We bless you, everlasting Father. We magnify your holy name. You are great, you are good, you are mighty, you are wonderful. Your name is beautiful, is excellent. We worship you, everlasting Father, in the beauty of your holiness. Blessed be your name. As we declare our love for you, we shout hallelujah unto your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship you. Somebody shout aloud, amen. Please, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We thank God for a beautiful day, a wonderful day. We know we are just ending a long weekend. Many people are out on, on vacation. We pray for journey messages for those who travel that the Lord will bring them back in the name of Jesus. And I also want to appreciate everyone, sons and daughters of the house, the visitors, those who put their weight to support the, the conference and outreach in Katutura on Wednesday and Thursday. It was awesome. It was wonderful and we thank God for the souls that came to the Lord, souls that rededicated their life to the Lord and the great things, the help the Lord gave to us and for the Lord opening our eyes that we need to be a good believer and a true believer and that which the Lord has done in our life the enemy will not take it away in the name of Jesus amen today is another day and we are here in the presence of God amen. help me ask your neighbor are you ready to eat from the table are you ready to hear from the Lord I believe the Lord has a great word for you and I this morning so don't worry about your friend who is not here who has gone on vacation just focus on yourself and what the lord has in store for you so this morning we have a great woman of god who will be ministering to us the prophetess and the mother of the house can we put our hands together as we appreciate the woman of god amen god bless you
uh, rest in the promises of God. We were reading Psalm 46 verses 10 and it was so beautiful as Apostle asked us to read it in different translations. One translation said what? Stop fighting. Stop fighting. And the other one said what? Get out of traffic. Uh -huh. Step uh -huh. Step out of stay out of traffic. And the other one said be still. Put your hands together for yourself. This is a good church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God all the glory. Please, if you don't have a notebook, get a notebook. Uh, get your Bible and make sure that you take notes every Sunday. You never know when you will be called upon. Kingdom kids, you are released. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the kingdom kids. Thank you so much. Kingdom kids, you are free to go. God bless you. And then, when we started off with this month of refreshing, God said that for us to do greater works, we needed to be refreshed. It was almost like a pause. I need to refuel you so that you will be able to run the race up till the end of this year. So this was our month of refreshing so that we will be able to end this year well. Hallelujah. And, and we want to thank God for Apostle for laying a solid foundation. And I believe that if you are asked by anyone, so what was this month all about? What does it mean to be refreshed? Who is refreshing and who is being refreshed? I believe that all of us will be able to, to say a thing or two. Am I right? Yes. Uh -huh. So we understand completely the theme of this month and for that we celebrate the men of God who, who taught us very well in the last three messages. Now tonight we are rounding off the month of refreshing and this is the final message for this month. Hallelujah. Second last before the Wednesday message. But the last one, Sunday message. So let's really go to the book of Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16, we will read from verses 1 to 21. It's a little bit lengthy, but I want us to read it because I want us to get the full gist. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 16 from verse 1 to 21. If your neighbor doesn't have a Bible, please share your Bible with your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, next Sunday, please come with your own. If you don't have, tell prophetess so that you are sorted out. Because it's important for you to have one. Judges chapter 16 verses 1 to 21. If you are there, say amen. amen. The Bible reads, one day Samson went to Gaza where he saw, and as I'm reading, I'm preaching. Hallelujah. One day Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. He saw what? A prostitute. Uh -huh. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, at dawn we will kill him. Verse 3. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate together with the two posts and tore them loose bar and all he lifted them to his shoulder and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron some time later he fell in love with the women in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah what was the name? Delilah. Uh -huh. the rulers of the Philistines went to her and said See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his strength and how we can overpower him so we may, we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. Verse 6. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered him, 
If anyone ties me with seven fresh bow strings that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bow strings that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men <clears throat> hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bow strings as easily as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes down, when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Verse 19. Verse 10. Sorry, aha. Verse 10. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You have made a what? A fool. <clears throat> you have made a fool of me. You, you, you lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. <laughs> he said, if anyone ties me securely with robes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new robes and tied them with them. Tied him with them. Then with men hidden in the room, she called him Samson. The Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threats. Verse 13. Delilah then said to Samson, All this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his hair, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with a pin. Again she called him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, How can you say, I love you? When you won't confide in me. This is the third time you made a fool of me. And heaven told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging. Verse 16. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day. Until he was sick to death of it. Verse 17. So he told her everything. He told her what? Everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other man. Verse 18, when Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, come back once more. He has told me what? Everything. He has told me what? Everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, where was this? After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair. And so began to subdue him. And his strength left him. What sort of sleep is that, Samson? <laughs> then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from the sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. He did not know that the Lord had left him. Verse 21. Then the Philistines seized him, gorged out his eyes and took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles they set him to grinding grain in the prison, but the hair on his head began
began to grow again after it had been shaved. Father, bless the reading of your word. Speak to us individually and corporately. May we understand you as you speak to us. May we understand the word that is coming out this morning. And may the word fall on good ground. May the word change us. May the word take away everything that is not from you. May the word add to us that which you want to be added. May our lives be transformed as we are hearing and sitting in this atmosphere. Holy Spirit, move like never before and touch us individually and corporately tonight, this morning. In the name that is above every name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, are you awake this morning? Is your neighbor awake? Hallelujah. The message is entitled, but the hair began to grow again. But the hair began to grow again. Tell your neighbor, but the hair, but the hair began to grow again. again. Hallelujah. The Bible says, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 32 verses 27, he says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Question mark. In Isaiah 55 verses 10 and 11, God says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and back that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, he says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall not return to me empty. But it shall accomplish what it please and it shall prosper in the thing which I have sent it. It shall not return. My word when it comes out will not return void. My word when it comes up will not come back to me empty, but it shall accomplish the thing for which I have sent it to be. Tell your neighbor it shall not return empty. The word of God will not return empty. The word of God cannot return empty. Hallelujah. Can I pause a little bit and prophesy to someone sitting here this morning? Perhaps you are sitting with the word in your life this morning. Perhaps you are standing or sitting with a prophecy over your life and perhaps you are thinking but now it has been long it has been a month it has been six months it is a year and i'm still waiting on the word hallelujah to come to fruition i'm here to tell you that word is coming to pass this morning in the name of jesus oh, can i can speak to you this morning the word that you are waiting on the you are sitting with. I don't know the prophecies that were said over your life, but I'm here to declare to you, child of God, don't be anxious. I'm here to tell you, child of God, don't grow weary. For the word is to pass over your life this morning. The message is entitled, But the hair began to grow again. I, I, I don't know whether I'm preaching this morning. I don't think I'm preaching this morning. But this morning, I've simply come to declare the word of God. Hallelujah. I've simply come to make a declaration this morning. When the Lord, when the Lord gave me the word for this morning, uh, he, he made me to remember the word of God that is upon my life. When I received the word for this morning, I immediately remember the word of God upon my life. And he said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. Speak. When you speak my word that is in your mouth, men and women will be moved into their destinies. He says, when you speak my word that is in your mouth, people will be set free. People will be delivered. That is the word of God upon my life. When you speak the word, they 
will be set free. And this morning, I'm standing in that commission. This morning, I'm standing in that assignment to speak a word of God that will set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it depends on you what you do with the word this morning. Because the word that will come out is already coated with everything that you need. Amen. Amen. Now in the scripture we read, Samson went to Gaza and he slept with a prostitute. <laughs> he, he, he went to a city called Gaza and, and he went to sleep with a prostitute. Now Samson was a child whose birth was prophesied. Samson was not an ordinary child. His parents were barren. His mother couldn't conceive. But on a particular day, the angel of the Lord came to his mother. That you can read in the book of Judges. You can just write it down. Judges chapter 13 verse 5. And the Bible says, this is what the angel said to the mother of Samson. She said, you will become pregnant and you will have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor. Because the boy is a Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb he will take he will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines he will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines that was the assignment of Samson when when the angel came to tell the mother that you are not just getting an ordinary child the child that you will conceive, the assignment is that he will deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. But the assignment was coated with a condition. There was a condition attached to the assignment. He said, this child cannot drink alcohol. This child that has an assignment to deliver Israel, he of the angel to the mother of, his, of, of, of Samson. And he said, the reason is because this child is a Nazarite. What is a Nazarite? A Nazarite is an Israelite who was consecrated, set aside for the service of God. That's a Nazarite. It's not an ordinary. This person has been dedicated. You are only doing the word, the work of God. So that type that was Samson, a Nazarite. And, 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 and Samson had unusual strength. He was, he was a strong man. All he needed to do was to shake himself. <laughs> if something happens, all Samson needed to do was to shake himself. And the presence of God was coming down on Samson. And that unusual strength would come up. And he would devour people. The Bible says Samson took the lion in his mouth and tore him up. A lion. A lion. That's how strong Samson was. In another scripture, he said he took 300 foxes. Foxes. Those things are fast. But Samson was so strong that he gathered 300 foxes together based on his his strength <laughs> so he was unusual and he was set aside by God this was the strength that came to him from God and, and, and the Bible says the night he slept with a prostitute the men of the city waited for him at the gate and the men said tomorrow morning we are killing him he went in with the prostitute, but we are waiting him. When he comes out, we are waiting for him at the city gate. We are waiting for him to kill him. But the Bible says in verse 3, Samson woke up in the middle of the night. <laughs> While they are waiting for the morning to come, he, was, he woke up in the middle of the night. And then the Bible says he took hold of the doors of the city gate. City gates were fortified. He took hold of the city gates.
gates together where two bulls and tore them loose bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders. <laughs> City gate. He tore it. Lifted it on his shoulders. That's how strong this sense was. <laughs> but the Bible says he fell in love. <laughs> he fell in love with the girl called Thank you very much. Delilah was not strong. No? Delilah was not strong like Simpson. But she had a different type of strength. This type of strength that will make the government put her on a payroll. Delilah was not employed by ordinary companies. The government employed Delilah and said, tell us what is the strength of that man. Check verse 5. Verse 5. Judges 16. It says, the rulers of the Philistines not, not, not the chefs. These are the ministers. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, see if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength. So Delilah was on a payroll of the government to bring a man down. <laughs> what sort of strength is this one of Delilah? She's not an ordinary girl. And Delilah would each night let Samson feel comfortable because he was a strong man. So he would go around fighting and then he comes back tired. So she will make him to feel comfortable. He says, sweetheart, what is the secret of your strength? Baby. <laughs> Honey Budge, can you tell me what makes you so strong? So Samson would tell her something else. Because it was covenanted. This was not something that was supposed to be released to people. There was a secret between him and God. This was his secret weapon. This was a weapon of mass destruction. And you don't give details out so easily. So Samson would try and say, ah, you know what, uh, uh, if, you time, if you time me and if I sleep, and, uh, uh, then, then I will be like an ordinary man. And then he will shake himself and destroy. It happened three times. Every time he will tell her something, she will call the man. And then when he wakes up, he will destroy them. But each night, without getting tired, she would continue. Sweetie, why do you make a fool of me? Why do you say you love me? Yet you are not telling me the truth. Am I not your boo or what they say? Boo boo? Why don't you tell me the truth? And then the Bible says she kept on and on. And in verse 16 and 17, it, 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 the Bible says, with such nagging, she prodded him. was sick to death. He was just tired. He, exactly. He was sick and tired of the same question every night. Tell me the strength. Tell me the secret. She went on and on. And the Bible says he got so tired and he told her, he told them, my strength is in my head. If anyone cuts this head, I will be as weak as any other man. <laughs> so there's a strength for any other man. And there's a strength of Samson. So he knew I'm not in the league of any other man. I'm in a league different than them. But when my hair is cut, I will be in the league of any other man. And the Bible says, when she realized I've got the whole truth, when Delilah don't know, this is the whole truth. The Bible says, she called the man and she said, come back again. Come back once again. Because now I know the truth. 
And then she make him comfortable. He slept and then they cut off his head. And then when he woke up, he couldn't do anything. The Bible says, when he woke up from the sleep, he shook himself again. Because that's what he was used to. He tried to shake himself. But this time around, when he shook himself, the Bible says he never knew that God had left him. He never knew. So all this time that he was going to this girl and that she was prodding him, that she was seducing him, the Holy Spirit was reversing. Perhaps calling him Samson. Open your eyes. Samson. Perhaps it was loud at the beginning. Samson, go back home. Samson. But then later on, perhaps the Holy Spirit was fair. Samson. Samson. And he did not realize. And the Bible says when he shook himself, he woke up and realized that God had to left him. That was the story of a man set aside to be used by God with an assignment to deliver a nation. But he fell being seduced by the enemy. Now, Delilah is not necessarily a woman. Delilah is not necessarily female. It's a spirit. Delilah can, be, can operate through a male spirit. It can operate through a female spirit. It, it is a spirit that seduces you to reveal the strength of your success. It's a spirit that will try to find out from you what makes you like this. Why are you like this? And the aim is to bring you down. It's a spirit that looks as if it cares. It's a spirit that looks as if it wants to take care of you. But it wants to know how it can Actually bring you down. Mm -hmm. That is why not every help is from God. Can I repeat that again? Not every help is from God. Some helps are traps. Some helps are bondages. So Delilah is a spirit. And Samson revealed his secret to this demonic spirit of destruction. And the Bible says he woke up and realized that he was not so strong anymore. He tried to do the things that he used to do. But he realized that there was no strength in him. What is the Lord telling us this morning? What is the message of the Lord to us this morning? And the Lord said, I have seen the affliction of my children. And he said, just like Samson, some of my children has, they have lost their strength. He said, they used to pray before. They used to wake up at midnight before. And they tried to shake themselves as they used to. But they have realized that there is no strength in them. Oh, 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 they, they, used to, they used to buy groceries before. End of the month, they used to go to the shopping, uh, uh, to, to, to the shop and buy groceries before. But today, all they can do is five items because they have lost their financial strength. They can't do that anymore. They used to buy electricity for a month before. But nowadays, all they can do is to pay as you go. $10 today, $20 today, $10 tomorrow. They have lost their strength. They, they used to give before, but they have lost their giving strength. And all they can do today is to receive from people. They used to do that have lost their strength. They have been seduced by the system and they have lost their strength. Have you ever tried something you used 
to do before and realize I can't do that anymore. Have you ever, have you ever tried to do something today and realize back in the days I used to do this with ease but now I can't do that anymore. Uh, you say I, I used to read books. I used to, I used to study for three hours straight without any tiredness but today the moment I open my books I in 
your old pictures. If you compare your current status and how you used to be two, three years back, you would say, I want to go back to those years. Because back then, I had money. Back then, I was more, more energetic. Back then, I was strong. But the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. This is the day of refreshing. Whatever the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus is giving you refreshing today. I don't know whose word that is. But whatever was stolen in your life, whatever the enemy came to destroy, the Lord is saying, I am refreshing you today. I'm giving you back your strength. God is a God of project progression. God is a God of moving forward. God is not the God that gives you something today and takes it away. God is not the one who puts you on a pedestal and removes you. That is the work of the devil. God is a God that takes you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from greatness to greatness. And the Lord is saying, I want to restore you to your original strength. I want to restore you to your original beauty. I want to restore you to the default that I've made you to be. This is your day of refreshing. Yeah, the, people, the people are looking at you and they are saying to you, once upon a time, she used to be that girl. She used to be, but now today, it's history. That man, he used to be, but now there is nothing. But the devil is a liar. Yeah. The story is changing today. Yeah. Your hair is growing again. Yeah. Your strength is coming. this 
for you. I'm giving it back to you. If this message is for you, I want you to come to the altar quickly and find a place on the altar and speak to the Lord this morning. If this message is for you, why don't you come to the altar this morning and find a place to kneel down and talk to your father this morning. Reba Sata Bakaya. I don't know what it is that you have lost strength. I don't know the area in which you have lost strength. But the Lord sent me with a word. And when the Lord speaks it, it comes to pass. Just sit on, on your knees this morning if you can and talk to your father. You know the area where you have lost strength. Is it your strength? Financial strength? Is it your beauty? Is it your influence? Talk to your father this morning. Talk to your father. Just talk to your father. This is your money. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. I want us to pray this morning. Restoration is coming back. Restoration is coming back. Restoration. 
Depression is coming back. In the name of Jesus, everything the enemy has stolen, we get it back. Take it. Take it. In the name of Jesus, on this mountain, on this mountain, get it delivered. Every agenda of Delilah over your life, over your ministry, over your health, over your relationship, be ever frustrated. Your spiritual strength is ever restored. Spiritual energy is ever restored. In the name of Jesus. The mercy, the mercy of the Lord is speaking. The mercy of the Lord is speaking for you. The mercy of the Lord is speaking. Yes, you make that mistake. Yes, you make that error. But mercy, mercy is rewriting your name. Mercy is rewriting your story. Mercy is speaking a new beginning in your life. Kalinda Korobosia, begin to walk. Begin to walk. That spiritual leap that has been led, receive strength now. Receive strength. Receive strength. Receive strength. Kayeda Kaleda Rebosiana. I Karabasiana. Be restored now. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Be restored. Be restored. It is done. It is done. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We break the agenda of the enemy. The anointing break the yoke over your life. In the name of Jesus. Be restored. Be restored. In the name of Jesus. Kayana Kaya Nerebosia. Be restored now in the name of Jesus. Restoration. Receive that fire. Receive that fire. Receive that fire. Be made whole. Receive that fire. Kayaba Sekeria. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Kayaba Kalendere Nebosia. Kili Kalabosiana. Rika Kalikeria. Rendo Kosokoriana. Iba Kaliana. Receive that fire in the name of Jesus. Be restored and be reinstated. Be restored and be reinstated. Get that fire back. Get that fire back in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Kayaba de Kelia de Limo, Rimo Kosi Kalia, Riko Koso Tolia, Hari Kelia Begin to as we pray, see yourself in the new light of the day. Kali Karaba, Elena Be restore, be restore, receive it, receive it in the name of Jesus. Kalabosia, in the name of Jesus. You are hereby restated. Your faith is restated. Your strength is restated. In the name of Jesus. Kayando Koriana Kali. Redo was Kalia. Iba Kaliana Kiri. Zibo Koto Kuniana Kali. Jesus. Your joy is being restored. Your peace is being restored. Kikala Batiana. Ikala de Kalenebo. You will never remain the same. In the name of Jesus, I take it in you. Hey. The power of the Lord is at work in the name of Jesus. Restoration is taking place now. Now is taking place now. In the name of Jesus, be restored, be restored by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Yeah. 